Okay. Hello and welcome to DCP episode, DCP Live episode number 166. Almost screwed it up right there. Actually, I did screw it up. It's okay. You know what? You know what else is different tonight? It's a Friday. It is a Friday. It is a Friday. Yes. Yeah. Why is it, it a feels Friday? Weird. Yeah, does it feel weird? It does feel weird. Weirder than I thought it would. Mm. It might be Friday for you, but it's Saturday for me. So. <gasps> is it Even really? Weirder? What time is it? It's uh, 2 a.m. 2 a.m.? 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. For, for, wow. for those that don't know, Polar Bear, welcome to the show. You're, you're, on, the, you're on the episode this week. Uh, where are you located, actually? London. London. Nice. Mm-hmm. And are you drinking tea right now? Uh, no, that would be <laughs> rum. Okay. <laughs> That is a solid glass of rum. Yeah. Thanks. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Well, welcome, guys. Yeah. Today we are doing the show on Friday because yesterday was, uh, it was Thursday, as a matter of fact, and the Game Awards was was on. Yeah. I know numbers, math, crazy. (laughs) It's like it works and stuff. So, yeah, the Game Awards were yesterday and uh, we had a great time watching that. But now we get to talk about destiny and stuff and things right indeed yeah something like that something like that new, new stuff <laughs> is here yeah. Some yeah. that's right we got the new I, I never know what to call it expansion season pass season it's a new it's season. season it's a season just a yeah. new season yeah, yeah. Just a i give it a new season yeah okay all right it's all right. a new season then yeah it's mm-hmm. like it's like winter and destiny yes yeah winter and destiny <laughs> Correct. Yeah. You know, it just like winter, there's new activities. Instead of snowmobiling and skiing, we get a timepiece. A and... time dial. Yeah. A time dial. <laughs> yep. The old time dial. It's gonna be interesting. Be- yeah. That one. Before before we dig into the details on that, Polar, how has mm-hmm. um how's Shadowkeep been for you? How's how's the the previous it's season? Been, it's been all right. To be honest with you, I kind of took this season or the previous season not to do too much. Okay. Um. So. My prior Destiny experience kind of revolved around a hell of a lot of Gambit. Most people that are in right. know that. You are the um, um you are the, the Gambit aficionado, right? Um some people have dubbed me the Gambit Queen. Gambit Queen. Oh, yes. Yeah, so what's it's not necessarily one that I, I've I've liked, but I've embraced it. <laughs> um Okay, real quick, can, yeah. can you describe to me what it's like to truly, truly enjoy Gambit? Yes, I'm um, quite curious. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I was ready for that question. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> truly, truly, truly enjoy Gambit. Um, alcohol. That works okay. quite well. <laughs> I could get behind that, definitely. Yes. Yeah. What is it about Gambit that you enjoy? Like the I mo- actually just, what's, what's the part? I think for me, the thrill of it is just literally melting bosses and um, killing things. That's really mm-hmm. it. As simple as that. And winning. So, yeah. Okay. Winning is more fun play. than, you know, mm-hmm. they say it's about how you play the game, but I disagree. It's really about winning. It is. That's where 100%. the fun of sport when it comes, comes to, from. <laughs> with Gambit, it's literally about winning. Because if you lose in Gambit, I mean, like, really, come on. Yeah. You just <laughs> if I'm going to lose, I prefer to lose fast. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my motto, right? Just, just get it yeah. done with quick. <laughs> so in terms of shadow keep, I really didn't do too much. It's only recently in the last week or so that I've actually done the new dungeon. Oh, um, okay. I ended up doing a lot of PvP. So when I first started playing Destiny 1 many years ago, I literally only ever did PvP. When Destiny 2 came around, I really didn't like PvP. So I never really played much of it. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so I took this opportunity with the changes being made that they did to PvP, having threes in comp, for example, doing elimination and all that kind of stuff to get back into my PvP roots. Um, and I did. I managed to do my very first uh, season of getting to 5,500. Oh, so nice. That was kind of fun. awesome. And I did that predominantly solo. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Do you think your, your lo- love of Gambit is like a natural progression of your love of PvP, but not having a place to put that love momentarily? <laughs> Maybe I think so, but because like I just didn't like the PvP matters mm-hmm. from the beginning of Destiny Two, um, and when Gambit came around, it was something that I could get my teeth into. It's something that I could do. There was like multiple different modes that you could like take on different roles. Um, yeah, I'm a Titan main. I just like to run around and fist things. You know, it's not like I really nice. use that many guns. <laughs> um, guns are optional. I don't need them. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so essentially, I think with that, it was kind of good, and I didn't really do the whole invading side of things. I was more tactical in terms of 
um, stats to be able to melt bosses, to be able to um, clear ads quickly and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of how it was. Nice. Did you um, roll a full set of Reckoning armor? Oh, yeah. I had... What set? All four sets on all three characters. Whoa. Which one did you That's use, a lot of Reckoning. Like, what was your preferred yeah. set? Um, that is a lot of Reckoning. <laughs> <laughs> was the Reaper sets, probably. The Reaper <laughs> and the Invader set were my two. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so even though you weren't, you didn't prefer to be an invader. You went with that set a lot. Mm -hmm. I did actually. When I so I I went through playing with teams and four stacking and all that kind of stuff to doing it solo a lot as well. So I mm -hmm. would mix it up depending on whether other people were wearing armor or not. And if I noticed that people weren't being or wearing invader armor, um, I'd pop mine on and just go and invade. And mm -hmm. yeah, just grab that portal. I can as remember. As possible. Exactly. I, yeah. I can remember there was one time. So there was one one particular season. I can't remember which one it was, but they had to play a lot of Gambit for 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 whatever reason. And I matched up against Drewski and Equagan and a couple of, a couple of others. Mm -hmm. And I was solo queuing. Right, I was solo queuing. Not one of them was wearing armor. I popped on my invade armor. So for, the key thing for me, the way to, to defeat an invader is to not let them invade. I knew that if I let Drewski into my side, <laughs> I would be dead instantly. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, I made it so that he never invaded until we pulled out Primeval, and by which time oh. um, we'd won. Wow! Nice <laughs> strats right there. A little notch on the belt right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he managed—he managed to invade. He did get a couple of really good invades in, but mm -hmm. not enough to stop him nice. melting a boss. So, do you do you prefer <laughs> Prime then? Um, Prime over regular Gambit? I, I I like Prime more so, but for me it's more about the the better Prime uh, the better mode is probably normal Gambit. Yeah. There's not so many issues with it. Um and I feel from a Prime perspective, no one actually plays Prime how I play Prime, which is kind of, you know, you use the armor, you use tactics, you use You um, have all the sets. Stats to be able to right? Yeah, and all of that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah, you're like you're set um, up for it. Yeah, but you go into prime matches. No one ever wears it. That's no true. one ever does it. No one uses the packs. And so, well, you know, last season I was just like, oh, screw Gambit. I'm going to go play PvP. Yeah, I mean, typically when I'm in prime, I'm doing it because I'm working on something specifically. And so I'm never oh. using the armor. But anytime I do notice that I go up against a team that is using the armor, I'm like, oh, mm. boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it'll be a quick match. Yeah, it's noticeable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely swings it. Um, yeah, I what was also, your? Uh, I'm sorry. What was your? What was kind of like your favorite? Because you mentioned that you played a lot more PvP in Destiny One. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So, what was your favorite meta in Death Destiny One? Like, oh, what God. really? Okay. Was your? See, prime? I came in as a Taken top, so I was Taken top. Oh, I haven't heard that in a That's while. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I came with Taken King meta. Um, so, and I was on PlayStation at the time, and I think. I think for me, I I played all characters. I didn't. I don't think I mained one, but I love sticky nades. Before sticky nades were, met, were meta, so I used to use those quite a lot. Nice. I think I was just an, an annoying character to play again. <laughs> Shoulder charging sticky nades. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah that exactly. that Girlfriend's meta that is kind of still exists if you play uh, Destiny Two or Destiny One on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty or the PS Three. Oh really? Like, yeah, because they never they never got Rise of Iron. So the game just kind of stopped there uh, on those yeah. two consoles, but it's still live. It you did, still play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah, you can still experience the meta. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, glorious. Yeah. 30 frames per second. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, see, the thing is, I don't mind playing games on console. Mm -hmm. But most games that I've played on console now actually do 60 frames, not. 30 so that was true before destiny 2 yeah yeah way yeah. before yeah. destiny mm -hmm. 2 so i mean timefall 2 which is another game that i used to play a lot of was 60 yeah yep. Yep. You know? yeah and that was before destiny 2 so those guys but, came from call of duty right and they were i mean they revol revolutionized call of duty i think in a similar way that bungie did with halo mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that they did was you know the uh the aiming down sights and mm -hmm. the the speed of gameplay, the 60 FPS and like the mm -hmm. the action arcade gameplay, and they they really in Titanfall 2, I think they really perfected it. I think that was a oh, fantastic game yeah. that was, over, was overlooked by game. so many players. Yeah, yeah, it um, was. Yeah, it was it was probably the best PvP like game that I've ever played. 
to mm-hmm. be honest. And, and I don't think it has a weak thing. spot, Polar. I think it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic PvP game and a fa- fantastic campaign. PV- yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the campaign is is beautiful. And I think I'm pretty sure I shed a tear or three when the BT, BT. died. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, I'm waiting for I don't like the follow up. Oh, yeah. I think we've all been waiting for the right. follow up for a very, very long time. And I'm, yeah, I'm thankful that they've done and brought out Apex. I think that was a really good move for them. And I think the way that they uh, respawn marketed it was perfect, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it does really, really quite well. I know that at the moment a lot of people are kind of worried about the SBMM side of things. I do play Apex from time to time, mm-hmm. um, not very often, but it's it's a bit of fun for me. Um, so I. I feel like there's a, enough of the community and enough people around that who... And also, this month, Planetfall 2 is free on PlayStation Plus. So if you have never played it, and you are, are on PlayStation, Download you can pick it. it up. Get it Absolutely. 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 You know, yeah. free. Um, and I know that a lot of my Titanfall 2 buddies have been having a lot of fun because like 40,000 people are suddenly playing oh, that's cool. Titanfall 2 again. Yeah, that's got been... a dedicated community still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, and thankfully, I'm still kind of edged in with them. Um, they did, uh, Respawn did their Extra Life thing last month and they asked me to come and hang out with them. Which oh, is that's fun. awesome. And that's really cool. I streamed from the, the Respawn uh, Twitch site, which was good, and helped raise money for, for them. That's awesome. Oh, that's um, great. So I, I, I'm... Although I'm not massively part of that that community anymore, it's nice that people still kind of think of me, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. that is awesome. It's really cool. Obviously, yeah. you made an impression. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I miss uh, I miss Titanfall. I am glad that Apex like is in that universe, but I would I am looking forward to Titanfall three. Yeah, and I'm hoping that it doesn't come out, you know, alongside Battlefield whatever. And yeah, uh, like, or Call of Duty. That's what keeps happening. Call of Duty and Destiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like that's what mm-hmm. it keeps happening in the Titanfall series is it, it keeps just getting let to die by EA and EA, like, hopefully yeah. with Respawn's recent string of hits that stops happening. Hopefully that becomes they, the marquee title for EA as opposed yeah. to Battlefield. They need to do hopefully. what they did with Apex and just suddenly it's in the middle of spring or early or late uh, late fall or late winter and suddenly it's like oh maybe as opposed to doing a fall game like they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um but I would imagine that a tight like Titanfall has enough goodwill through the community that I imagine Titanfall 3 would get. I mean, Titanfall 2 got really good critical reviews, right? Am I really crazy? Good. And yeah. also, like a lot of the Destiny community ended up playing it as well. Game Sager was one of them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, I know, I think, if I can't remember correctly, but Dr. Lupo, I know he enjoyed it a lot. I don't know whether he played it for that long, but there was a lot of people that ended, did end up playing Titanfall 2 back, mm-hmm. in, the time, back in the day. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people who came to Destiny from Call of Duty, I noticed, went over to Titan, Titanfall mm-hmm. 2 for a while. And then I was attracted to pilots only because I could oh, never, yeah. I was never any good yeah. at the mechs. When I, first, <laughs> when I first started playing, actually, when I first started playing t- um, um, Titanfall 2, I was literally PvP, pilot versus pilot, the whole time. Yeah. So I played that for about three months before I actually got into a Titan. Mm-hmm. And then I found the fun that was fisting things. <laughs> <laughs> A solid fisting. That's great. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm, so a time main Destiny. Destiny. I'm a time main in Titanfall, so, you know. <laughs> it all checks out. I ha- you know, I got, maybe I have a thing. Who knows? <laughs> uh, so now you're back to Destiny. How are you enjoying the new season? Um, Yeah, good. So in terms of the brand new season that kicked off on Tuesday, haven't really played much because I work full time. Mm-hmm. Um, so so you're a I'm player mainly. Basically, yeah, I kind of went from full-time streamer for a year to uh, weekend gamer. And um, if I can get on during the week, then I will. Um, but things have just been, because it's the end of the year for a lot of people, it's kind of busy at sure, work. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But in terms of the season so far, um, I've enjoyed what I've done. Um, I have been chatting to Osiris quite a lot. Um, uh, I've chatty. enjoyed the obelisk. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and doing the, the sundial. <laughs> That's actually been quite fun. Doing the sundial with people has been quite fun. So my favorite I haven't time got piece to... in Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I've been enjoying that, and then I've also been like hanging out in the PvP, going, "Where's the Arbalest user?" Because I'm going to fist them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I've been seeing them. I can see their little lights. I'm like, "No, you're not going to get me, darling." Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Arbalest. <laughs> Arbalist. Arbalist. I see you, Chevy. He's he's saying Frick Titans. I don't think so, see, huh? <laughs> Oh, you go into a PvP match, you just hear boop, 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 boop. It's like typewriter <laughs> stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just walked into a very active office. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, man. I would love that. A gun that made like typewriter keys <laughs> typing as like, the gun. And then when you reload it, you heard ka ching. <laughs> no. That'd be great. <laughs> that would be amazing. So, I would like that a lot. I, I think I, I kind of get uh, flashbacks when I whenever I hear the recluse. The recluse does that to me. Just I'm just like, oh, God, it's yeah. recluse again. Please don't. Right. Okay. So we've had uh, two or three days. Has the recluse been nerfed enough or is it still? No, it needs to be nah. nerfed more. It's still quite heavily meta and still quite heavily used. Yeah. Even though the damage drop off is done and there's no longer um, hitting crits. When you when you use it, it's still very very viable in PVE and both in PvP too. I wonder if on console it's significantly hurt, because on mouse and keyboard, obviously, it's a lot easier to just you know aim at the head. Mm. There's less recoil on mouse keyboard. Yeah, less recoil, just easier time Better to control range. the recoil. Yeah, overall, yeah. yeah. So I wonder. Are you about? Are you a mouse and keyboard player, Polar? I am. I converted okay. about a year and a half ago. Nice. Yeah, I feel like. It's like- <laughs> I feel like with Recluse. Moving religions. Yeah, I, I converted, you know. <laughs> My husband was a massive keyboard user, you know. We wanted to please the church with limited frames. When, when D2 <laughs> first came out, when D2 first came out, I was on PlayStation. Okay, so I was on PlayStation when it came first came out. And then it um, the PC version dropped that October, so I had that as well. And I, it was just easier because I was between both communities. And I think at the time I was doing a lot of, when I was streaming anyway, I was doing a lot of um, Escalation protocol excuse me um so escalation protocol was a thing so i used to organize groups of nine people to like come in and hang out and get the get the shotgun or the sniper or the smd whichever one it was um uh, uh so yeah i used to do that but i used to do that across console and pc so it was it was easier to use um controller and then i just kind of gave up on playstation i was just like yeah no nah. pc is where it's at poor consoles <laughs> I've been really looking at the, uh, they have these, I think NVIDIA calls them the BFGDs, which are the big format gaming displays. Oh, yeah. Which are 4K oh. displays that run 120 hertz Oof. in your living room. Mm-hmm. Now, they're really expensive right now, but mm-hmm. and I don't believe that there's any graphics card out there that can really power it. Mm-hmm. But I think things are going to converge very soon. I think the next generation of gra- graphics card is going to come out sometime next summer. And these BFGDs, hopefully more companies make them, lower price models come out. And like in our living room, we could conceivably have 4K 120 FPS gaming. Mm -hmm. You know, for a few $4,000. Yeah, just (laughs) a small loan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can just remortgage my flat. The price of Mm us used Honda Accord. (laughs) (laughs) Was the 2088 Ti a new, uh, new chip? Or was it like a continuation of the yes. previous ship? Oh, it was new? Yes, that was a new, new architecture. Yeah, it's the Turing architecture. Yeah. Uh, I believe we're going to see kind of the next. I don't I don't know if it's going to be a new architecture or it'll be the same architecture, but like significantly improved. But they might go to the 7 nanometer because they're still on 12 nanometer or 14 nanometer. I'm not actually sure. Mm-hmm. But I do believe it's been about two years or will have been about two years since the 2080 Ti. Yeah. Don't they usually do like three or four years? Mm-hmm. Those usually days? around two, Is I think. Two? Yeah. Because I feel like yeah. they keep on like adding, the, you know, they have like the full specifications and they dial it back for their initial release and they keep on yeah. adding to that for the next, you know, the Jumbo, the Titan, the whatever, you know. I think that AMD is going to release a higher end video card somewhat soon and hopefully uh, NVIDIA does the same. Yeah. I think, you know, I can't predict exactly the time, but I think this summer is roughly soon. Soon summer for 20, upgrades. 20. I've been yeah, holding summer off. 2020, maybe fall. I've been holding off on that. I still have a 1080 Ti because I like to do two generations instead yeah. of every generation on there. Yeah. Yeah, I want to upgrade my computer. I have the graphics card. I just have to build everything else around it. It's about Didn't you just build a brand new See, computer? I have I, this my one, PC but not my a, gaming one. Oh, okay. I, I only have the one PC. I don't have two or a dual PC set up, and mine's just a 1080, so it's not even a Ti. Do you notice any problems yeah. with uh, one PC? No, not yeah. at all. I, I hear it's a lot better no, now, right? I mean, one thing I, that's fantastic about the new cards, uh, the the RTX series, is that their mm-hmm. encoder on the graphics card for streaming is really good. So one PC streaming on those new graphics cards is fantastic. Yeah. It's equivalent to, this is getting into tech stuff for <laughs> streamers only, but it's like equivalent to medium settings in OBS, Yeah, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, with no CPU impact. Really, yeah, really for nice. single single PC setups, it 
really helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, back to Destiny. Because that's <laughs> right. what we're talking about. <laughs> What's the show yeah. about? <laughs> New season. The this seasonal is a side content. quest. It's Friday. Friday's close to Monday. Friday's right? messing yeah, with our schedule. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's just, just yeah. Um, I, one thing, I know that we want to talk about season the the new season but we got to talk a little bit about that new xbox yeah right Ooh, that's 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 the tower. Right, isn't it the, the tower thing the towering yeah. inferno of xbox yeah the, the triple x mm -hmm. i'm gonna call it mm -hmm. it's yeah, more the x, x than x. the last x yep <laughs> xbox i like the name XX. scarlet better scarlet yeah. Yeah. Way better. scarlet yeah. is like a really nice name mm -hmm. yeah if they had made I'm it sad. red too like oh my god it been 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 really, so cool. or just the launch edition in red and called it scarlet i would i would have been on board with easy that. easy money i would buy it yeah special edition <laughs> launch day edition scarlet and it's scarlet red. scarlet that would have been cool. the scarlet 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 <laughs> i mean if you had it so it kind of incorporated the shadow keep you know Keep, then that could also look the Scarlet cool. Keep out of it. There hasn't been a special edition console since what? Destiny 2. Or Destiny, since Destiny was 2. it Rise of Iron? No, Destiny 2 had a special on Xbox? edition. Didn't it? Destiny 2 had a, uh, no, on PC, PS4. Oh. Oh, on PS4? No, You're there was definitely one. Right? You said there should have been there was a PS, PS4. There was a PS4 that was white that was a special edition mm -hmm. for Destiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there another one for Rise of Iron or was it there just the one? Oh, there might have been one for Rise Iron. I can't remember. I know. I, think I don't know. I'm gonna look at chat and see if they <laughs> chat nobody <laughs> knows. Chat always. Like, yeah, always but the yeah. interesting, you know, the interesting thing about the new Xbox is that you know it doesn't say new Xbox. It says X Series, right? Series X. Series X. Mm. So apparently, according to Sparty in chat, there's uh -huh. a theory going around that it's called Series X because you'll be able to play 360, one, and the new games all on. One yeah, game. they're gonna Full go hard experience. on backward compatibility. Oh, right? that's good. Actually, Isn't that I'm fantastic? Really With mm -hmm. your and uh, there's another rumor that there's gonna be more than one Xbox that comes out along with Series X. There's gonna be one that's roughly equivalent to the current Xbox X <laughs> Pro, whatever it's called, <laughs> the high end Xbox, Xbox now. One X. And then there's gonna be one that's like the premium one above that. So like the current one will be like the low end one, and the new one will be the high end one. Will it run Destiny 2 at 60 FPS in that wide, that's up to Bungie. and wide field of view? <laughs> None of this 70. That's up to Bungie. Yeah. Like that, that's, I would like to see that. That's the big kicker right there. Because right now, in order to get access to a high frame rate experience, you have to build a PC. Yeah. And there's a lot of people you that do. just don't want to have oh, to go. Oh, you could go to Stadia. You could go to Stadia. <laughs> Questionable results. <laughs> But there's a lot of people that don't want the hassle of having to deal with the PC, with the upgrades, with the um, uh, drivers for your graphics card. Like us talking about graphics cards is going to make a good amount of people go, what? You know? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. move on. Yeah. Destiny talk starts at. <laughs> but that's because, you know, a lot of people just don't want to have to deal with those technical specifications. So it'd be really nice that this game that we're playing right now gets that upgrade and we don't have to wait until Destiny mm. 3. Yes. I um, I mean, I, I it's up ultimately up to Bungie, right? Like, do they do they want to target sixty frames per second on the new hardware, or do they want to go for a higher graphical fidelity? Yeah, well, apparently it was the CPU issue for the current generation. So, well, I mean, they designed the game though; they could design a game that targets sixty frames see, per I, second. I don't see how that's, that's a possible given. thing when you've got other games that play on PlayStation Four at sixty. So that for me is like, if other games can do it, why can't you? Apparently, it's a architecture thing. So it's like, sure, the city can. It's like think of it like a, a city installing a new transportation system. They have to rip everything apart in order to have all that happen. It's like, you know, at what point does it become cost effective versus waiting for more hardware that's going to be capable of it? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's it is up to Bungie though. They can they can decide. I would say that their their audience says make the choice that says go to sixty fps. Pretty uniformly, right? So yeah. I would be disappointed if, you know, I don't know if we got to wait for Destiny 3 for them to make that switch or if they just are able to do it because the hardware is so much better that they can just up yeah. it to 60. If the hardware on, is like, on the new one. if the hardware is like current PCs right now, then it is. It should be able That's, to do that. Yeah. You know, like they, they, technically they should have that capability with those next generation consoles. Right. Um, but really, I mean, that's a bungee decision. Yeah, for sure. They have to enable it. Yeah. 
Um, so we've been playing season to dawn. The new season. What's yeah, everybody think? Have... Lots of Osiris. I like it a lot. <laughs> I like it a lot. I, I think. Like um, so last season I didn't do anything in season of the Undying, really at all. Same. No. I was very much the same. I was just like, okay. I didn't. I did go and do the um, what's that? The 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 event that was on the moon, a little bit, but I didn't really do major. And like I said before, it was like a week ago, I got into the dungeon, which is really really good and really good fun. But I was just like, eh, I'm in there now, done. But, Lots um, of one and was done with the season dungeon? dying not attractive to you or was it you were just pulled away by other games um i didn't really care about vex offensive i got bored of it pretty mm. quickly i never yeah. played that actually true story <laughs> not once i never not once wow and the only other thing in season of the undying was what mods and mm -hmm. exotics so like i messed around with the mods and that was fun yeah. um but in terms of season of the undying not shadow keep stuff i didn't really care about any of it. Whereas this, the sundial is a lot more interactive. It's more fun. The loot is better overall, I would say. Definitely yeah. looks better. Yeah. Um, yeah it's you gotta just, get your it's leafy a much greens, more though. fleshed activity. <laughs> yeah, and, and like I said, for me, it was just I was having much more fun playing PvP. So even once I hit my um, 5500 5, in comp, I continued to play comp. And I played it solo and I hung out and I just like, I won games, I lost games, I, do, I didn't really care. I, I was just having fun and I equipped a sniper, um, which I don't often do. And I've been practicing with that and trying not to use my shotgun or my fists too often. So, you know, and that was one of my, my things, my goal, my personal goal in the game was just to try and get better with a sniper. And it's nice. been fun to try and do so. And that was, so in, been... that was in Shadowkeep that you were doing that? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. Have you, you and you haven't had a chance to play comp yet, right? Uh, not yet, not this season. Okay, no. yeah. No. So I've been laid gonna, up I was gonna get a with a back injury, so I actually haven't played any of the new season. Oh. I haven't. I tried to play a little bit on Stadia in my bedroom, but actually sitting up in bed was too difficult for me. <laughs> That's a bummer. So I'm actually going to ask you guys a lot of le like sure. kind of questions, so you can explain to me what exactly is the new pocket watch of Osiris. It's the menagerie, essentially. Is yeah. it the menagerie? Yeah, actually, yeah. I think yeah. I actually find it more fun than a menagerie i think it lasts a lot less so it's not as long um uh, the experiences that i've had in, in it anyway have been kind of good fun um but it's kind of like the menagerie meets leviathan i guess is what you would call it yeah. with certain mechanics that they have mm -hmm. um, how so how does it meet the leviathan uh you know the i don't know what they call but the little dudes in the orbs that you have to punch i call them the, the old dudes I, Those guys, know, the old, the old yeah. the man, floaty punch the Scion guys in the in the in the box. Oh, okay. the old, when you gotta go punch some old dudes, yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> they're there. <laughs> Those guys, yeah, yeah. yeah. It it kind of feels like menagerie, but um, I don't know if there's less encounters. It feels like there's less encounters, but it's more colorful. I feel like there is. Yeah, yeah, more right. colorful. Yeah, it's a lot more colorful. Mm -hmm. One thing about a menagerie is that every you do it two or three times, and it's just very bleak after a while old right sure it's dungeon. all dark and yeah which isn't a bad thing by any means but it's just you kind of get sick of that setting after a while um hmm. this one can you walk me through the gameplay loop real quick sure yeah so you uh you load in to the sundial it's a match made six man activity uh you load in and you clear out enemies in the very beginning where initially you would go and talk to osiris osiris is in there you go up um it, it, it has that bar again we have to fill up the bar like menagerie to get to the mm -hmm. final boss type of thing. So you clear out the first ads and you go into the sundial teleportation time altering device and it randomly chooses um, either past, present or future Mercury, right? I'm, yeah. I believe those are the options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you go and do that encounter. And once you've done that encounter, there's usually things like grabbing balls. Surprise, you know, bungee. Games I love grabbing pick balls. Up balls. It's like one of my it, favorites. I mean, I love grabbing balls too. <laughs> Amazing. But, you know. yeah, high five. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> one thing that's different is there's champions there's cabal champions that show up mm -hmm. so you have to deal with those uh -huh. they're pretty easy to kill though if you're on level those are the boomers in the bubble yeah <laughs> but this time boomers in the chat. bubble oh, shout out to oh, chat oh that's good that's really good yeah boomers that's really good right yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm was, calling them from now on is it siri boomers and chat in the that was pretty good oh, boomers that's, and bubbles yep. that's what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> so you kill a bunch of guys, then you go back in the time device. It opens up another past, present, or uh, future portal. Uh, then I think this week it always ends in future Mercury, where the the scion that you kill. 
where it's all sad. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Where the sun's yeah, been yeah. sucked out or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's cool. It's a, it's a good activity. Also, what they do is they have these obelisks right now currently on Tangled Shore and on Mars. And you yep. can level up those obelisks and you can get uh, bounties. You can get. Uh, How do you level them up? You get the stuff called fractalized dust. <laughs> Is that what it's I called? Just, I, just I, like, I, I, I thought it was, it was like polarized something. Polarized, I remember the fractaline. Word in it. <laughs> it was something like that. It's, um, it's a new no. currency, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you get that, and then you put in like 200, and you get it leveled up. And as you level up, you get different perks. There's also some interesting uh, mods that you can get from those places. Yeah, polarized. Can you fractaline. only get that new currency from the uh, Apple Watch? <laughs> <laughs> You can get it from the Apple Watch. You get a guaranteed <laughs> 10, and sometimes you get lucky and you get like a, a satchel of 100. Oh, okay. Like as a drop on the ground? Yeah, it's like a rare drop. No, not on the ground, but like as a drop on the screen. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So you do that. Uh, you level up the obelisk, though, on various places, and uh-huh. they give you different rewards, and you have to activate the obelisk to get that reward from the sundial activity. So if okay. you want to get... Is the obelisk a group activity, too? No, the obelisk is a patrol activity. No, that's better. Okay. Yeah. So it's, I actually, I think it's really cool. I like it a lot. You, you go to Tangle Troll, you do this stuff, you do some things for your obelisk, and you, you activate it and you can get those rewards from it. Then you go to Mars, you do some stuff for that obelisk, you activate that one instead, and then you can go get the new linear fusion rifle, which can roll with firing line. And there's another thing I forgot what the, the god roll is, but apparently it does more damage. Word in the street is it's more damage than um, Izanagi's Burden. What? Really? Yeah, because of the buff to what linear does? fusion rifles. Oh, more, right. mm. more DPS or more single, single target shot. damage? Single target. Well, um, I think DPS because you get five in the magazine. Uh, Liquid quills, firing line, more yeah. damage, less DPS. Firing line, it's already got a 30% increase. It's the only one that can roll a firing line right now for linear fusion that rifle. That was heavy, by the way. Yeah. yeah. He's the nerd in chat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more damage, less DPS. There you go. So okay. I guess single target damage as fast as possible. So that's that's something to chase after right now. Also, the grenade launcher is a new archetype. It is, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It, it hits the ground and it has a wave of fire that goes forward. Like, what's the Titan? Cool. What's the Titan nid? Oh, the the barricade, the the bottom Titan barricade when you like pop it and it just yeah a flame through it. Actually, yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. What was the the dragon's breath? Did that in Destiny One, right? Where you'd shoot that and it. Oh yeah, like rocket Was it rocket Did yeah. it go it that. forward? So this I hits. Don't think it went. I'm going on random. This hits the ground. <laughs> I don't know. It explodes. I and just sends remember a, it looks a line of fire. Yeah. Goes, yeah. Yeah. Thermite grenade. Chat is saying. There you go. But it doesn't have continuous pulses. It's only one shot. Like it's like mm-hmm. hits okay. the ground. You know, it's good stuff. Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So there's weapons worth grinding for. There's a new archetype. Is that a heavy weapon? Uh no, that's a special. It's a special. Interesting. You can get ran, yeah. uh, random rolls on. Yeah, it's really good. Pretty cool. Yeah, that perk is baked into it. It feels like an exotic, but it's a legendary that has random rolls. So well mm-hmm. done, Bungie. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see more of that stuff. Yeah, the weapons in general I've found are pretty good. And the, the new perks that are on there, they're not just this thing does more damage with the thing. It's actually like interesting perks where there's like osmosis is osmosis the one where you use a grenade and it changes your i think osmosis your element? is or is that a different one no i think it is osmosis <laughs> is, is that osmosis yeah well anyway there's a perk yes Chevy says yes i believe Chevy. so there's a perk yeah. called osmosis and when you throw a grenade it changes the element of that gun to match the element of your subclass. Mm-hmm. That's so it cool. Actually, oh, it's that's really actually cool. really cool. Yeah, 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 like they have, they've bought in interesting perks like that, and I, I love yeah. that. The big kicker is that when it's kinetic, it works. So you can have a kinetic mm-hmm. gun with osmosis, yeah. and then suddenly have it turn into void. All three elements. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is really nice. Oh, wow, that makes, that's dude, interesting. That, actually, that's one of the things I do miss about Destiny Two Year One: the interchangeable um, elements mm-hmm. that we used to have. I still have, you know. The curtain call in all three elements and other freaking guns that oh, I've right. had and kept from season one with all three elements because you, know, you just can't get them anymore. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. It was like, it was it was a thing that we used to grind for. Well, it was with, with me when um, the Escalation Protocol shotgun was the thing and the in thing. I had one in arc, one in Sailor, and one in Void. Right. Yeah. 
I had so many year one weapons in all three flavors. I, in fact, mm-hmm. I just recently deleted a bunch of them because I needed more space. Same, yeah. same. I, I, I was, it was a couple of weeks ago when I actually went through my vault and deleted all of the Osiris weapons except for the Perfect Paradox. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, speaking of, there's a new one, and it's fantastic. Yes. It's just as good. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah. That's what I used What's in. different about it? Okay, it has random rolls. Okay. Yeah. But it's the same... Same model. I, actually, maybe somebody can correct me. I maybe it doesn't have random rolls, and I just it's the same roll that always drops for everybody. Because I assumed it had random rolls, and you could farm for it. I could be wrong on that. Mine has um, rampage. It does have random rolls. Okay. okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's a really good shotgun. In fact, I used that and um, the boop cannon to go into gambit to just farm um, shotgun kills. Yeah, same. So I've been running triple shotting and gambit myself yeah. just to get those. It's ridiculous. 500 shotgun kills. I'm like at 250 and I've only played for like two days. <laughs> <laughs> Goes by pretty quick, honestly. Like I... Yeah, yeah people the were sidearm saying, one for strikes was really fast. Yeah, it was quick too. Was it? Uh, yeah, that's 500 as well? But, mm, probably. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. The only sidearm I really like is actually the Rat King. So. Rat King is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's big change from previous for the previous season, and actually a big change in Destiny is how these ritual weapons have felt. They're mm-hmm. very easy to get in comparison. Yeah. Like, really. Oh yeah. Very a lot easy. easier. Yeah, it's like it feels like ten percent of the grind from last season. Like you can get wow. all three of them done in a day if you're dedicated. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, which is it's nice. Uh, cause then you get, you can like play around with them a bit more instead of just working so for so long to get them and then having less time to play around with them in the season. Yeah. But also it's, it does lo- lessen the grind to get stuff. So I don't know. Yeah. I worry if there's going to be enough in this season to really satiate the appetites of I hardcore do, players. I think well, I, the I, comp I, one is a bit questionable cause you only need like 1100 points. Really? Oh, points, yeah. Which is like. You Easy. can get it. Some people get, get it in like three games. Literally, that's yeah. like half of what you needed last season, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's twenty one hundred before. I would prefer if they did like kept that the same and added maybe more things to quick play, or even just made it where you had to do get this this eleven hundred points in comp, but then they added some more stuff to quick play for you to do. But to mm-hmm. have it just be like you just play these like three games and you get the weapon, it just seems it just seems a bit weird. Because I'm yeah. especially How at the, the moment weapon? when What's the weapon? it's a linear fusion rifle. Oh, okay. oh god! Yeah, um, and also at the same time, at the same time though, comp is a lot easier this season and as it was last season. Um, I think there's like a couple of factors for that. One, we're not on um, Battle.net, which means that they've got separate servers. So when I there was one time a few seasons ago where I attempted to get to 5,500. I got to 4,000, and then I end up playing the same three people every time. You're from <laughs> yeah. Europe. Pardon? There's not different seasons. Uh, I'm sorry. There's not different servers anymore for Asia, <laughs> exactly. Europe. Exactly. And... Absolutely. Oh, so I never made that connection. That. So that, yeah. for me, oh, so right. personally for me, it's a, lot, it's a lot better because I'm not playing the same people all the time. Interesting. Um, that I'm was playing... a major complaint. I'm sorry. I yeah. just want to back up because this is a topic that we haven't discussed since it went over oh, the theme. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so the, previously, when we were on Battle.net, the world was split up on Destiny servers. There were yeah. there was I Asia, on... Europe, America. America. Was there another one for South America? Or was Europe or was no, America? Occupied? It was just uh, no. It was just Americas in Europe, wasn't it? Yeah, America's there was America, well, there's Asia and, too. and Asia as well. Was it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. Mm-hmm. So a lot of complaints I knew from people who played in Europe, especially, was that they would constantly see the same players over and over mm-hmm. again. Well, I was a European and I didn't actually know that it made a switch when it switched over to Steam. It, they got rid of that altogether. Yeah, so we don't know where know you know, we're literally matching people that, you know, we, it, we don't have the choice in which server we play on. So whenever I logged in on Battle.net, I would always play on North American servers. I wouldn't play on European right. servers. Right. Yeah, and also um, what was weird is it had different friends lists for each region mm-hmm. too. Right, that was, was weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that strange. made it very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> it, for so perspective. I think that has been a, a big factor yeah. for me in terms of comp and the fact that I can actually physically achieve it and not be roadblocked by the same six people, um, you know, over and over and over again. Uh, you, yeah, so that, that's kind of been a good thing. And also the matchmaking. I mean, the matchmaking was balked last season, not going to lie. And I did kind of milk it. 
Um, my very first game was against 5,500 people. And my last game, I was playing people that were zero. So, you know, there was no proper matchmaking at all in, in comp last season. Um, but it, I found that, that, that there, were, there were good parts. I, I hit 3,600, 36 to 4,000 for me was was kind of difficult. I kind of, you know, I won, I lost, I won, I lost, I won, I lost. Um, but that that for me is part of the experience. Mm-hmm. I kind of like that. You know, I don't want it to be an easy ride. And yeah, I'm not like everybody else that goes in and, and three stacks and just wins like that, wins every single game. I don't want to do that because I also want to improve as a player. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah that fun. makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. Do you, you're you using the freelance playlist, right? Yeah, I yeah. was. I, I'd actually switch it up. So there were times if I got stuck on the freelance one, I'd actually go into the team one because there are a lot of people that do duo queue. Oh, okay. So, um, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, and I ended up duo queuing for some of it as well. So, nice. yeah, that's cool. Do you think Gambit could benefit from a freelance playlist? Hmm, I don't know. Actually, I think personally, Gambit needs a lot of work first mm-hmm. before they do anything. And in um, you know the oh, what was it the the director's cuts that came out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a few yeah. Ago. the Luke Smith written one. Yeah. Um, he did touch on Gambit. Um, they weren't going to touch it this particular year, um, but they did want to potentially look at making a, a one-size-fits-all Gambit, just having one Gambit mode mm-hmm. rather than having the current two. Um, I actually did do a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a my thoughts on that um, YouTube video. You want to mm-hmm. talk about? Nice. Um, but for me, it was more about there are things that need to be fixed, there are things that need to be looked at, things that need to be worked on. Um, and how people play the game as well. So it's like, personally, it's like get rid of Prime and just use Normie Gambit because that's the easiest fix. Honestly, it really is. Nobody uses the armor. No one really gives a shit. And it's like, whatever. <laughs> Lord knows nobody wants to go into Reckoning. Exactly. No one ever does. I don't even want to go into Reckoning again. Farm some Do you weapons? know what? How? Seriously. Okay. I, uh, Are you Reckoner? I, I, I am, yes. <sighs> that's a lot of Reckoning. <laughs> it is a lot of Reckoning. Ooh. It is. My God, that's a lot. Do you? There's ha- not many, many of us either. So, do you have a God roll spare rations? I do. I have several actually. Several. Mm. And all from playing Gambit, not from doing the reckoning. See, yeah. See, I said the same thing. So Tomo was trying to farm spare rations in the reckoning yeah, that's for so long, and I was like, just go do Gambit. I've had mm-hmm. so many more drop from there than the reckoning. So yeah. I'm glad that I'm correct. I feel like I've <laughs> never seen a single spare ashes drop from Prime. Really? Yeah. Like, I get them like every other day. Like seriously, every other day I get one. I play. I've, tell, play, I've forced myself. I've forced myself into playing Prime to okay. do things, Double and secret. it has not dropped every time. See, I tell myself Tefting. if I do this, I might get a spare ashes. <laughs> Tef- so endure Tef- the pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do. do. I, I played two games this season and I've had a spare ashes drop. What? It sounds like some serious uh, hell. Maybe it wasn't Pope RNG all along. Maybe it was Bear RNG. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it's a bad thing. Maybe, Maybe it's it because you have the Reckoning movie. title. There's that too. Mm. Maybe in the Reckoner title. So my favorites. Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I do know the devs quite well that make thun- that make Gambit. So ah, they're giving you Maybe drugs. That's the thing. <laughs> uh, so back yeah. to back to the season. Yeah. yeah. Briar, you, you'd mentioned, like, do you think it's going to be light on content for the season? Like, yeah. I, I think there's going to be things to do, but I don't think it's going to be something like Shadowkeep. Um, that it's going to be something where there's going to be new stuff to do each week, but they're not necessarily going to fill out an entire week of content. You know? Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with that, personally. I think in yeah. terms of this particular season, it, it doesn't have to be masses of content anyway. If you think about it, right? We're coming to the end of the year. It's Christmas time. It's what, you know, people spend more time with their families and whatnot if they have them. Um, and then you got, you know, January is pretty much a downtime season. In, and then we're going into February. So it's like we'll have like crimson doubles, I guess, in February again, like we normally do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's that kind of stuff that it for me, it's, I'm not too fussed. Uh, it also gives us the opportunity, those of us that aren't as hardcore anymore, that I play at weekends, um, can actually get into and do the content. It's like, I didn't do the seal last season, mainly because I couldn't be bothered. But um, also at the same time, I was just like, of eh. offensive doing that. Absolutely. Vex offensive. Um, 
So, but this season, I might look into it. I might look into actually doing that and and nice. getting getting the getting the seal uh, and adding to the collection. So, you know, you've got um, yeah, as 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 Chevy says, you've got the dawning crimson, all of that kind of. Stuff. So, mm-hmm. there's there's other events yeah. going to be happening, and it's more of a drip fed, I think, this season. But I feel yeah. like that's okay because it's a really slow time anyway. Yeah, it. You know, Dusty has changed in that way this year. I think this year has solidified something that they've been saying for a while is that they want it to be something that you log in every day. Mm-hmm. But what mm-hmm. what's changed about it is it's not something I want to log in every day for four hours or eight hours for. It's really something I can do in twenty minutes. Yeah, like I, I get I get my like in Shadowkeep, I got my. Eris story bit like I did my mission for Eris I got to see you know what she said to her ghost for the week mm. and then I'd be like okay what else is there for a day do I want to just level up light level you know by playing strikes or gambit or something no not really you know what do I want to do besides this and to me it doesn't really speak to how I love to play destiny which is to really like dive in for hours and you know like it, it it's a weird it's it's a weird gameplay loop that they've fallen into. And it's one that I think strikes some players really strongly and kind of leaves other players feeling a little uh, less engaged. Do you mostly play destiny on your own or do you play it as a group of people? Uh, It really depends on the mood I'm in. See, for me, I tend to mostly play it on my own. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's like at weekends, I'll grab people from like my stream and stuff to come and Mm -hmm. hang out. If they, if I'm not doing something in particular, but normally I'm just like of an evening for maybe an hour and a bit if I get on, um, hanging out, doing whatever I need to do, doing a couple of bounties and you know shooting people in heads. So right. and that's about it really. So I'm I'm literally I am I've turned into a filthy casual. Frick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I think that's okay, and I think Destiny supports that well. Yeah, you know it's like exactly. You, you know if you just want to play for four hours a week, then Destiny has you covered. You know the, that's absolutely there for you they've talked about making destiny heart more hardcore. And I think they have in that they've increased the requirements of mm. some things in the game. Although from what Watts says, it sounds like they've dramatically pulled back on that. They have um, pulled back on a, yeah. So like, like for me, I, I wonder like somebody like um, Chevy who's in chat right now or Datto, mm-hmm. like what they're going to think after, you know, when they, when they think about this season, when it's all over, is it, is it going to be like a hardcore kind of thing or, are, you know, like, what is this season going to be? I think What's the story of this season going to be? Those kind of people, the, the hardcore people. So if you're talking the, the likes of Chevy, Sean, um, the the speedrunners, um, those that do challenges and all that kind of stuff, they they will always have that element. The great thing about Destiny is it kind of gives you that ability to be able to do that. You can be a filthy casual yeah. or you can be a hardcore person. Um, you know, it, it's all about doing what you want to do and how you want to play it and that's probably the best thing the destiny could ever do um and i think in terms of of the hardcore kind of content that's what you've got the 980s you know you've got the nightfall farming and all that kind of stuff you can solo those if you want to do a challenge that sort of thing you've got the dungeons you do have that i understand that this current dungeon isn't as difficult as for example the first one was Mm. um and but it's still there you know and it gives people i think that it's kind of also changing how people play the game and i feel like those that do challenges that do um like solo challenges that do um low mans in in raids now i've two manned every single boss apart from the current one in a raid i've also three manned the most the the the, um, oh which one was it the the raid before this one um you know and i've done those kind of things myself so it's like but it's it's for me that's kind of fun and it's something to do um, and it gives me a challenge to personally grow as a gamer. And I think that there's a lot more content creators in Destiny 2 these days that do that. And I think a lot more people within the communities that they find aspire to do that. So, you know, whether it's soloing Argos, whether it's um, two manning, you know, the, the, the current raid boss um, from Garden of Salvation, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And even, and it, obviously in previous seasons, that was a lot easier for some of them. Um, because of you had the automatic reload and that kind of stuff. It was still challenging, trust me. The like as a Titan main, spending about twenty billion hours on a warlock trying to do a uh, Gulran two man killed me. I haven't been on my warlock since. 
<laughs> Good decision. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, but you know what I mean? So it's it's like there, there's those, if you want to do something within it, you're able to do so. You know, it, um, X back okay uh, from Ascend, um, who who did who won like the 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 raid okay the raid race. Uh, I love those. Those for me are really really good fun. The raid races, mm-hmm. yeah. it's all about oh, yeah, sure. uh, And I'm incredibly glad that you guys have taken over in terms of doing um, casting for that because it's it's brilliant. Um, one of the things I uh, like, so I, like I've seen him and the Ascend guys do is doing speeds and trials and and speed runs, and and I think that that is also is a, is a brilliant thing. It's Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there, I don't think that there's lacking content for people who are hardcore. There's always something. Not in the PvE. There's always something to yeah. chase, whether it be like speedrun or, or exotic roles. I mean, look at yeah. Vendetta. Okay. I don't know if you guys watch Vendetta very often. Vendetta is an absolutely incredible gamer. You know, he killed the boss in the dungeon using seven punches with his titan <laughs> seven <laughs> i'm gonna need um, a link to that video <laughs> I, I will dm you that video i'm i'm Thank just you. like Whew, yeah go for it you know what i mean <laughs> uh, I, I, he does incredible stuff uh, as well so i think mean, he's mostly known for his pvp content uh-huh. but you know he he is an incredible gamer yeah so i i will say i think what bungie has done is shifted focus more towards seals and triumphs and that type mm-hmm. of thing for collection for game uh for the the hardcore gamer hardcore. yeah like because they 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 took note that people were upset with how long certain things took for ritual weapons and mm. they clearly corrected that significantly yeah maybe even a little too much like being able to get all three in a day is a little crazy that's a little quick <laughs> i mean maybe little, maybe take a few a days time. or a week i think that's fine but before sure. Randy's took like an entire week. If you're an average player, just I haven't got that gun. We'll never get that gun. Couldn't give a shit. I hate scouts. There you go. I hate scouts <laughs> too. I, I, I approve of this message. Jenny <laughs> Randy's was like pulling teeth for me because I didn't. I don't like scout rifles on a mouse, and yeah. it um it was rough. But at the same time, I did it did the Arbalest kills in one day. It's 125 kills with a linear fusion rifle. Did those one day. It was a bit much for me, for sure. But I was able to get it done in one day. And mm. if it ended up taking like two or three days, I'd be okay with that, for sure. Again, I, I think what they've done is they've made it so the hardcore chase for their community is, like you said, creating challenges for yourself, but also getting those seals and those like yeah. those triumphs that are essentially going to be like 1% triumphs for some mm. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, okay, so... Most people would have probably got their not forgotten by now, all right? Last season, I got mine. Okay, uh, last season, I had about 30% of the solo kills done um, already from previous seasons. But because I hadn't reached the points, because I hadn't done it, and I also wanted to do it mostly on my own, okay? I still did yeah. it, and I managed yeah. to get it. And I, and it was, it, was, it was a good thing to do, and that was an actual grind. And I remember when I first got my... Um, uh yeah the lunas howl that was that for me was a really 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 good grind nice and every single comp weapon i've got myself apart from the recluse oh yeah there was issues with that one but uh, <laughs> i'd spent too much time in comp the previous season trust me and yep. everybody that's got the mountaintop in like the most recent seasons has no idea how freaking easy they've got it honestly it's true. Mountaintop was a That's real thing. Mountaintop yes. was rough. That was a grind. And really I think was. also at the same time, you know, what we've got to realize is that we've also come into um, the new light players too. Mm-hmm. So this sometimes, some of this is experiencing for people who has never, ever played the game before. And One of I my children is actually a new that. light player. And oh, wow. he is loving the game. He has since bought Shadowkeep. And the season passed, so he's now like current. His light is higher than mine, which should be no surprise to anybody. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah. makes fun of me. <laughs> What's your uh, light to up to, old man? <laughs> uh, but new light, I think, has been a very successful initiative. I really do believe yeah. that. It, I don't think it onboards player it, players in the most in the smoothest way, but it's yeah. free, and that's awesome. <laughs> People mm-hmm. like free stuff, you know. Yeah. Of course they do. I mean, I mean, the only negative I would say in terms of the free side of things is the uh, glitches and uh, hackers and comp. 
um, yeah. which have yeah. been quite prevalent, and I've come across quite a few of them. Um, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. Like, you know, I want to see Destiny's PvP grow. I do, but there's a lot of issues, and some of them come down to the fact that it's on peer-to-peer -peer servers still. Yeah, yeah they really I need to be, so. build a new foundation for PvP. Yeah. On I don't think that they, they can't ever do that. <laughs> I don't think that that will ever happen. Um, you know, one of the fundamentals about Destiny is that it's always been a PvE main. PvP was an afterthought, even in Destiny One. So you know, it's never. It's I don't know unless they actually see, put the infrastructure for that. Then see, I agree I that it's that. main. It's mainly a PvE game first, but the way mm -hmm. that they give you rewards and pursuits and chases. It's a very confusing because a lot of the times, like we just had, we, we just exited a couple seasons of exclusively using PvP weapons to be the best at PvE and yeah, having long yeah. grinds I know, I know. in PvP to get those. And so Bungie's messaging of whether or not that's accurate, of it's a PvE versus PvP or this weird combo, mm. uh, it seems very blurred. And a lot of people would be very uh, upset if they, you know, if they just. And if you remember year one, right? Which weapons were the most prevalent in PvP? The ones from the Year one, Destiny 2 or Destiny 1? Destiny 1. Uh, Destiny 2, sorry. Destiny 2. Scouts. So you're looking at Year 1, Destiny 2. You had like, um, Leviathan weapons. So um, what was the name of the sniper? I remember your, oh, got... the auto rifles were yeah. real popular. Lens Uriel's got... Gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was scout rifles and auto rifles were like the, yeah. the main thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we got a good hand cannon until we figured out the... Uh... The Leviathan hand cannon. What was it called? Now? Midnight yeah. Midnight 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just think like <laughs> that foundational restructure that they got to do for PvP is very important. Like it is mm -hmm. I would argue it the most the most popular Dusty's ever been was when Trials of Osiris PvP was at its height. Yeah, it's uh Trials of Osiris is like massive, massive emotions for me it's um, what started me streaming in the first place to be honest and um yeah it was something that revolved around my entire weekend for for a long 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 time so yeah it was for a lot know, of people and, yeah. yeah yeah it was great yeah. yeah exactly i'm hoping you know i'm hoping that with this season going back to osiris then who knows what the future helps wasn't there I a think. leak about trials yeah, oh, probably. There I, was. I missed that though, so you know. What hey. was it? So I mean, it's nothing crazy. It's not going to be like people need to worry about spoilers or anything. But basically, someone was playing elimination, just el elimination in the elimination playlist, oh, and then was, when they um, left the game, they were hovering over where it says elimination, and there was yeah. a beta card that popped yeah. up. Mm -hmm. So and it had the boxes check off. It had, yeah, it had the, the three like lost things or whatever, and then the wins. And then it was like the and... seven, seven, seven wins. Yeah. See, I remember seeing that. This is yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there's people have yeah, recreated a couple of screenshots. it. Screenshots. People have recreated it in private matches to be able to show it off and with video to make sure that it's real. And it is, it is real. Yeah, it's well, on the And the spaghetti line. code that is destiny. One end of that spaghetti leads to this. <laughs> leads to a trials beta card. Uh, a little yeah. gluten free honest, trials beta. Like, okay. I mean, it's like when Lady and the Tramp starts sucking on the same spaghetti and <laughs> boom, trials card. Yeah. But it's not exactly rocket science when A, this season is all about Osiris. B, they've got a whole bunch of old freaking trials um, lords going to Bungie, um, yeah. and, and you know it's it's probably going to be talking about the metas and and PvP anyway. So I'm reckoning if it's not next season, it'll be the season after. I reckon 2020 is when we get trials back. So I'm definitely looking forward to yep. the potential of trials. 100. Mm, percent Looking same, forward to that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's one of the hackers, things I've been loving about elimination. Like the the hacking that's going on right now on PC, DDoSing is still mm -hmm. a issue today. Yeah. There's still Oh, come on. DDoSing has been happening since D1. Exactly. And that's that's Exactly. That's <laughs> like come on. You know? It's been, it's it's basically an a known a known thing in Destiny. It's happening. You seem to, to accept it like it's it's not Well, nothing ever gets done about it. Yeah, exactly. Nothing, nothing ever gets, gets done, done about it. How's that acceptable? You know? It, it isn't acceptable, but nothing gets done about it. You shouldn't like, have what else to have a VPN just to play a game's PvP. Right. But every single Crucible person has one. Exactly. Trust. And that's crazy. Right. How is that acceptable? It isn't. That's peer-to-peer, -peer, though. <laughs> so, you know. I mean, committing federal crimes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. 
Well, mm -hmm. that, I, I guess that's what I'm saying. It's like I'm I'm definitely looking forward to what happens with trials. I want that to come back. All those things, yeah. yes. But when it comes to fundamentals in PvP, my God, they got to go. They got to fix those things. They need to make that not so prevalent. So they really do. It, they really it do. isn't a hot topic that constantly comes up mm -hmm. with PvP. And then beyond that, if you have jumped into Crucible, <laughs> Arbalist, Arbalist, Arbalist. <laughs> Yeah, at the moment it really yeah, is Arbalist, Arbalist, Arbalist. I mean, I've had a few Crucible games um, since the start of the season, and I'm just like, okay, yeah, I see the shining light at the end there. I'm gonna run this way. Um, yeah. So it's, it's is this like, a long term problem? Do you think, or is it short? -term? I think no, it's short term. I think it's purely for the fusion rifle, whatever it is. Um, yeah, gun that the people are trying to go for. Yeah, I mean it's, that's the reason. It's like, for me, do you know what I end up doing? So do you remember when? the pinnacle weapon for gambit was a bow mm, yes i right. remember that one. i crushed i crushed <laughs> the soul of many many bow users during that season and once everybody else had got their bow i went and got mine <laughs> i ended up getting That'll mine the towards the end of the season it. as well for hush mm -hmm. yeah i hate bows i hate them I think especially in gambit yeah, i love like, them i love bows but they're completely useless in every way. I've, yeah. exactly. Some people are really good with them in PvP. So Style seeing they're completely so well. useful, useless is okay. not Okay, PvP true. not so much. but really PvP, people not... use them to great effect. So mm -hmm. I shouldn't say they're completely useless. But Yeah, they have they have a few <laughs> spots. But by and large, there's better options out there for your loadout. They feel so good to use. I remember, do you remember landing for the first time and like getting your first bow? And jeez, uh, when was that? Forsaken, right? Yeah, was, you landed. What was mm -hmm. the planet uh, that you land on in Forsaken after Tangled Cade's Shore. death? Tangled yeah, Shore. Shore. Thank you. Yeah. And they give you a bow like right away, and you go ham on like a bunch of scorn with the mm -hmm. bow, and it just feels so good. Like they feel good. They nailed it. They just mm -hmm. aren't useful if you're trying to be good at the game. <laughs> Not very effective. <laughs> yeah. In comparison to the other guns. But I think the thing is that the, the emphasis there was like good at the game, and that's something I'm not. So, <laughs> right. If you're if you're trying to keep up with your A team, and mm. <laughs> yeah, don't use a bow. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um, so yeah, Arbalus was uh, fascinating to use in the Crucible. Talk about RNG. RNG headshots. I... <laughs> is it? Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> But when they nerfed Queenbreaker's bow because of Gambit back in the day, <sighs> all linear fusion rifles got hit massively when it came. Yeah, but uh -huh. the thing was, it it it's not Queenbreaker's bow's fault that it had double the size of the hitbox that it should have had. Oh, whose fault is it? Bungies? That was the creators. Yeah, Bundy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, come on, if you have a hitbox, right, where I'm shooting at your feet and it gives you a headshot, that's not my fault. Yeah. Well, what's the solution? It's the nerf queen bringer bow, right? Yeah, but it was it really was the yeah, size of the hitbox. It was a blanket. It shouldn't have nerf. affected all the others. Yeah, a blanket nerf that hit all of them, and uh, I remember because I I really liked uh, Crooked Fang and a few others. I used those quite mm -hmm. regularly. And then when that nerf hit, I was like, "Well, I guess I'm not using these ever again." <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I've never really used much of them. Um, I was never one to use a uh, sleeper either, to be honest. So yeah, sleeper got hit just... by that too. But Arbalist. You know, came out after that nerf, and you it can did. definitely it feel did. it feels like at times you can point directly at someone's head, and it's just it's literally rolling the dice whether or not you're going to get mm -hmm. the crit or not, which is strange. But so yeah, that's that's been going on in the crucible. Um, one thing that I did get that I haven't tried in the crucible yet, but I do know it does 120 damage when it hits in the proper Ooh, radius is ass nades. <laughs> Who? Ass nades, yeah. Talk to me about some ass nades. Ass yeah. nades, the new <laughs> we, we, hunter exotic. When you <laughs> okay. when you dodge on a hunter, it leaves behind a little bomb. Oh, oh an yes, ass I saw those. Well, present for later. Yeah. It's just like my dog. I was gonna call those spot pills, personally. <laughs> yeah. So it's in the crucible. It's it's just kind of like a silly thing to mess around with because the way that it works is it like drops the bomb kind of behind you. Uh -huh. Um, or just like I guess where you dodge. So if you dodge backwards, it would be in front of you. If you dodge forwards, it would be behind you. Yeah, it goes um, directly up and then drops. So it's like a yeah. So there's, there's no a little trajectory. bit of a delay, right? It doesn't instantly just damage. It's like drops, 
and then it explodes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the the best way to use it would be if someone's chasing you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you just like dodge around the corner, and then they run to chase you, and then they get hit with it. That could and it be does one hundred twenty damage. You can melee well, dodge cool. and potentially kill them if they're confused where you dodged. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> cool, <laughs> but it's su it's super situational. This is an exotic armor piece that gives you this exotic boots. Yes, boots. What, what yes. Boots. What's the name of it? Bombardiers. Mm, hold on. Bombardiers yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Bom bom bombardiers. Yeah, the bombardiers. Bombardiers. That sounds awesome. Bombardiers. It sounds infuriating yeah. if you're the one facing it, and it sounds awesome if you're the one using it. It sounds it's like not what was that, that perk? infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> Watts, what was that perk in uh, Call of Duty that you dropped the nade when you died? Yeah, mar martyr or whatever. Martyr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There was, I was thinking of one myself because I don't know if you guys ever played um, Uncharted, that, that game series, mm -hmm. but they had a multiplayer and there was one particular grenade. Um, it was um, a cluster bomb grenade. And if you died, um, a cluster bomb would actually pop out of your body and kill everybody that was around. That's annoying. The vicinity. So, yeah. Watts, you said it's not that infuriating? Mm-mm. It's Why? super situational because it doesn't oh, just okay. blow up immediately. You can't just dodge and then it hits them. They ha mm. they it has to. It's on a timer. It yeah it pops up and then it explodes. So you can't just dodge next to someone and it instantly does 120 damage to them. Yeah, if they're running okay. past you, they'll run past the radius. The radius yeah. is pretty big. Mm. It's like the size of a control point, just about. Mm. So it's and it comes and out every time you dodge. Every time, so you can spec yep. for you know as fast Ooh. dodge possible. It's definitely fun. You can do some fun stuff with it. Mm -hmm. It's just very, very easy to actually avoid it. Yeah. Any theoretical usefulness for this in PvE? I think if you're a shotgunner, I could see this being really useful to where if like you slide up, shotgun, dodge, you're automatically throwing damage on the battlefield and you're following up again with another shotgun. So it's kind of like getting yeah, you know, if you're if you want to aggressively go a two v one, it potentially could help you out. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Yeah, if they're clustering could, up. Yeah. If they are, uh, if they're long range, you know, trying to snipe you, then no, not gonna happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's a is a fun pack. I haven't yet to go on to my to, uh, to test out the the throwing knife um, wonders that I've actually seen you do. What's so? You know. uh, yeah, it's been fun. Mm -hmm. It's been fun for sure. Yeah. Speaking of, how has the class changes felt? I've only played Hunter so far. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I think the the knife, it's not going to be as oppressive as people think it is. Because um, you do have to get a headshot with the knife in order for it to kill them. Unlike uh, handheld supernova, where you can just like, not even, you can yeah. close your eyes and throw exactly. it. Just you don't even, you don't have to know where anywhere. they are. You just yeah. <laughs> you can hit like seven people with it. It's fine. Yeah, huh, exactly. Uh, I hate the knife... Thing. You can see when someone's like charging it up. So if someone's really good at pre-aiming it and then throwing it, then I'm sure they will cause people big sadness. But it's pretty easy to avoid. Um, and yeah, not nearly as oppressive as handheld supernova. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much what I thought. Uh, is there any aim oh, no, assist to it? Don't worry about it? Like, is there any kind of... Yeah, it feels pretty easy to hit in general, yeah. I would say. But it is also easy to avoid it because you can see them lining it up. Oh, really? You can see it like the animation of them cocking their hand back. Yeah, I mean it's like a solid second, fourteen gauge. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's definitely so the best way to use it really is not just to go for hitting people with the throwing knife. It's if someone's running at you with a shotgun, back up, throw it at them because they're just going in a straight line. Especially if they're sliding, it's going to be very difficult for them to quickly switch places of where they are so you can hit them with that um yeah if people are running at you if you're really low and you need to reload just go for a throwing knife yeah they, they, but mostly if, if someone's rushing you you can pretty much hit them very easily that, that's hmm. what it seems like uh because i tried some where they were strafing or they were it was like a medium distance and they were strafing and yeah. lining up that shot is really difficult because <laughs> yeah. A, the you know the timing of it has to wind up, and then you have to pre-aim where they're going to be, and then you have server latency. So, if that person's lagging to you at all, then good luck on getting that shot hit when they're strafing. You know what I found to be like probably the most useful way is if I get someone low, and then they're like hiding behind a wall or they're behind a titan wall, I just throw the knife at the wall and it bounces and hits them. And oh, nice! Them. That's cool. That's the the bounce is really Sneaky. nice. 
you can <laughs> sneaky knife. <laughs> you can make the yeah, you can make the the bounce work in your favor pretty easily. Nice. I wonder if there will be any spots on the map where people learn to throw that knife oh, at spawn. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah like the tomahawk in call of duty days welding. yeah <laughs> exactly uh, i haven't had a chance to try out any of the other uh solar classes now i've been really looking forward to playing the titan hammer and i hope to report back next week about how much fun i'm having it with it so i tend <laughs> to main a titan hammer anyway um but i do top tree always have done i'm not um a middle tree guy uh it looks like people have been having fun with it though which mm-hmm. is kind of yeah. fun um, and I know that they did actually buff um, the, 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 the well, I call them my snipes, my hammer snipes. I literally cross map people anyway with them, which is brilliant. <laughs> nice. Um, and they one shot people anyway. So they've been uh, added to to do more burn, which is brilliant. So yeah, yeah I've been having fun with that. More and actually that's been my, my, my key thing in comp. Um, most people would normally run away from, I put on my peregrine greaves and run towards them. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Nice, nice. Always good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice. Quite fun. Um, yeah. Anything else this week for the season? Oh, hold up. Big one. <laughs> uh huh. We met Saint 14. We did. Uh-huh. He did. Well, he I asked for yet. his shotgun back. He's kind of pissed. He didn't even know who you were. He was like, what am I? That's my job. Who the hell are you? What are you doing? Spoilers. You know, so I actually saw, I can't remember what it was. I think it was a post on Reddit, which I then saw on Twitter. And they said that we are basically the stranger to Saint 14. We show up from a different timeline. We give him a gun and then we peace out. And he's just yeah, like. Yeah, we are. Huh? That's amazing. <laughs> That's us. We did it. <laughs> so that, that really made me laugh. That was funny. That's incredible, actually. I love it. The mission's really cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's it's a single mission. It's one mission. Yeah. Well, uh, and it's going to continue over time, right? Like kind of. That's what like I'm did. Yeah, like every week, there's going to be stuff that unfolds with the story until it comes to a culmination. Mm-hmm. And we currently just left him there, so hopefully he we get to see more of him. <laughs> we just I, I liked that with Eris last season at first. And then I was like, you know, I kind of wish you could just do this all in one shot and get this like story chunk in one, in a single more cohesive way. Like mm-hmm. if I could have done all of Eris's ghost stories kind of as like, n- not as an opening campaign, but like as a, a single burst, because they went away, mm-hmm. right? Like if you didn't do one one week, it was gone. You could do yeah, the but, next one, right? Since Am when have you been that? able to do that anyway in, any of the aspect of destiny. What's that? Like it, it's how in terms of destiny as a game, we it takes us weeks and weeks to like get lore or to get story and anything. Mm-hmm. So it's like we don't get it. We don't, we've never got it. I don't think all at once. We tend to. Come yeah, no, but it. I would have uh, because this was a. Uh, it, it was a cohesive story. Or it could be told as a cohesive story. It would have been nice if that option was available to me. If I, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe even if I unlocked it by doing it one week, if I could go back the next week and do the new one and do the old one. So I could do them both. Like, so mm-hmm. I, I kept those, I kept those story missions open to me. So I could do it as a single kind of playthrough and see them yeah. all together. Cause it, they were cool stories. And especially if you like, if you just didn't log in one week and missed one, like, Oh, that, that sucks. I missed one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we do Twitter questions. Are we on to that? Let's do it. <laughs> I think yeah, right. I think we've gone through just about everything. Right? Um, I didn't open up the unless you. I mean, we haven't really talked about the dawning, but I don't know whether you wanted to do that because you know the dawning up, comes right. up on we, Tuesday. Yeah, we have info on what's in the oh, dawning. Right. Yeah, we mm-hmm. saw the. Do what's what's the hot points on it? I mean, the only thing for me is that there's a polar bear barrow. That's it. Oh, nice. That's, that's there it is. The armor yeah. looks really good, actually. This time around, yeah. dawning yeah. armor always looks dope. Yeah, this one looks this one looks good. Yeah, but Looking essentially we'll be baking cookies from Tuesday. Yep, that's coming back. Which I love the cookies. cookies. Yeah. The cookies yeah. is great. Can mm-hmm. I get that polar bear sparrow from baking cookies, or do I have to pay uh, for it? I don't know. I'm I don't know that to be honest. Um, I honestly don't mind if I have to pay for it. I will because <laughs> um. Oh, uh, they actually announced what was for silver only. I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was a it was a finisher. Finisher, that's right. Yeah, yeah, the finisher is the only thing that's going to be silver only. The rest is okay. Mm-hmm. There's a new dawning finisher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a like Wait, ice bright dust or cookies. In the Eververse store? 
Right. Mm, no, the okay. So on the on the, the twab, spires, there's a the picture. Be, hold on, just a sec. There's a picture of everything. There's a picture of all three guardians wearing armor. There's a picture of mm -hmm. a snow globe guardian, a, yep. a snowflake guardian. Is that a sword? No, the it looks like a sword actually. And then the polar bear oh, sparrow. Yeah. Is all that mm -hmm. stuff going to be silver only? No, 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 no. That's only that's the finisher. Yeah, the only thing that's is silver and just the okay. How, is there any of that stuff that I can earn by doing the cookie stuff in dawning, or is it all that's um, bright dust? Bright dust. That's all okay. bright dust. So I wonder if there will be. Is there going to be a cookie system this year for the dawning? Yes. Yeah. Will I be able to earn any of that stuff in that picture through You'll the cookie stuff? You'll be able to get stuff? the SMG. I don't know what else you can get, okay. mm -hmm. but definitely the SMG. How do you feel about that, bro? <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> not great. <laughs> How'd you expect me to feel about it? <laughs> Good. Feed your anger. <laughs> Feed your anger. <laughs> Take your save and strike me down. <laughs> <laughs> Disney Plus has been great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, when a little off topic, but uh, when the Mandalorian ends, we're going to have to do a side quest episode on the Mandalorian. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I Eric. <laughs> yeah. right, sorry to our UK friends. I've, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. But oh my God, this. I can't yeah. wait to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty exciting. Um, do we want to do Twitter questions? Yeah. Is, that, is there anything else in the top? I, I mean, I that armor and stuff looks really cool. I wish I could learn, earn it in game. Yora No Zero says, for Polar, what is your most memorable moment in Destiny and how do you balance a job in Destiny? Two-part two question, No Zero. Do not approve. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two questions? Are we, talking, are we talking Destiny 1, Destiny 2, or over across Destiny? Uh... Destiny I'm going to go with Destiny 1 or Destiny 2. Oh. Okay, so most, most memorable, memorable moment. In Destiny 1 was probably when I hit the lighthouse for the very first time. And that was the very first time that Trials was on three maps. If you remember, one was Burning Shrine, mm. one was Anomaly, and the other one was uh, uh, something else I can't remember. But there was three of them. And um, I have, yeah, I remember that. I will always remember that. Um, I won my winning game on Burning Shrine. And that will oh, forever yeah. be uh, a memory for me. Nice. Destiny one. Nice. Um, in Destiny was two, it not only the one that had the the orb thing in the middle? It was like a round yeah. map. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was another yeah, moon. Yeah. Map. That was actually my favorite map. That was my favorite map actually. And I'm hoping that comes back eventually. I'm, I do. I think it's cool. I'm sure it will. I think they're gonna bring all of the ones that people just sort of liked back. To be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I miss mm -hmm. Asylum. Which is a lot of D1 maps actually. Yeah, in Destiny. Yeah, especially like the Mars ones with the doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure those are coming back for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh, in Destiny 2, um, hmm. I'm not, I, I think probably uh, two manning um, the Crown of Sorrows boss, probably my biggest highlight. Um, it was a really, really big challenge. And. Uh, I think in that challenge, it only it not only was quite mentally challenging for me, but it, it was it was one of those things that where I actually clicked that I was actually all right at gaming. So yeah, that was probably a, a big moment for me in Destiny Two. And in relation to juggling gaming and working, I don't. <laughs> so it's really really hard um, because I've I've been at my new job for since July, since the end of July, so a few months now. Um, and it's only just now that I've managed to get in so that I know that I'm getting home uh, at a reasonable hour. So in the evenings, I can actually do some form of gaming in it, um, uh, after work. But it's predominantly been in terms of streams just at weekends. Um, this week, the last couple of weeks, I've just taken this week and the week before off streaming just to make sure that I'm winding down in terms of work because I'm off of work from the 20th. So off of work from next week. And then you got me over Christmas. 24 7 nice yeah but yeah it's it, it's a juggle and i've been very grateful and thankful for the community that i've got they you know mm. still pop in <laughs> when i do eventually stream at times that's awesome. so, yeah that's, yeah that's really cool uh sixes and seven says do you guys constantly mix up sundial and obelisk like i do actually i haven't 
I actually have not. No. <laughs> No. Have, yeah. no, no, we're much smarter than you. <laughs> obelisk. Smarter than the average bear. Yep. Obelisk is an obelisk. A sundial you can mm-hmm. hold in your hand. It's a yeah, it's a circle. Actually, I guess yeah. yeah, sundials can be big, like the one that we actually go to in the game. So different. <laughs> uh Justin says, so Gambit, what would you do to make it a mode more people would want to play, or is it a dog egg in the snow at this point? There's not a single comma in this whole sentence. What is a d- a dog egg? A dog egg. I'm going to think it's a dog poop in the snow. Probably. Okay. Um, <laughs> personally, for me, for yes. Gambit, like I said before, it's just get rid of Prime and have normal Gambit, and then you'll probably have most of your things solved. If you can actually make it so that there's a combination of the two, um, uh, would be good fun. So it's like there are elements in normal Gambit, for example, the the final round where you're just using supers and whatever else if you you know to to kill a boss and that's actually quite fun so it i don't know fun, whether yeah. you know you can combine that element in prime very cool it, but it's it's one of those things for me where i feel like unless you're an actual hardcore gambit player which let's face it there's about 10 of us in the entire community that do that my um, mom's a gambit pro <laughs> yeah it's her favorite thing it really is you're <laughs> also a big gambit pro too you know, so it's it's kind of like you know, I know like there's like Riot and there's Benji and there's a few others as well that, that enjoy the game. So it really will depend on on that to be honest. So I just I just feel like from a community aspect, no one really gives a monkeys and um just uh, bin prime because it's easier. I, I think Gambit has a lot of potential. I really do. I, one mm-hmm. of the biggest problems oh, yeah, yeah. that I see mm-hmm. is that the moats thing that happens is it's so it's very one dimensional where it's you go collect these moats, you shove it in the thing until you get the boss. That mm-hmm. could have all have so much more stuff to do in the battlefield where you could be putting those, you could be choosing what to spend those moats on in um uh kind of like in league and choosing how you spend your stuff to go down a skill tree or something like that. You could I could mm. see it going down that direction. I mean, there's a, there's so many other different aspects and potential as well. So it's like one of the things that I've thought of is actually you know how when you play uh, Apex, or you pick a character, right? When you go in, it's like, well, when you load in to Gambit Prime, why not be forced to pick an actual role? So you get your, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Your your invader armor, you get your um, moats one, you get your, mm-hmm. you know, sentry one. And you just, you whoever picks it first gets it first. And that's the roles that you guys kind of play. I'll I tell you why. Because that... my bounty makes me invade to get guardian kills. Because so I'm, I'm working on a bounty or I'm working on a quest. or mm-hmm. I really have no no care in the world if I win or lose this match. Well, my that's, only that's reason for problem. being here is because I'm working on a quest and I got to get 10 shotgun kills or 10 auto rifle kills or 10 invader kills. Exactly. Or, I have, and that's, like the reason I play Gambit is solely because I have a bounty that makes me do it in a specific way. And I, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, about ninety three percent of the t- of the players of this game actually that's the only reason why they play Gambit. Yeah, yeah. And then if I happen to finish my bounty while I'm in a game, adios. <laughs> <laughs> Mid match, leave, depart. So, so you know, it's I, like, well, you know, what do you do? Because it's like, I feel like it's well, good in terms of aspects of that, but it's just, I, I could talk to you for, for days on Gambit and how to do it, but it, it's no point coming from me because my perspective and how I play Gambit is completely different you play to a lot every of single other fucker. Yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. I have 80 resets. You know how that's 69 games per reset. Damn. That's a lot. That's a lot of games. That's a lot that of Gambit. That's an awful lot, a lot of, of reckoning. Gambit. I I've always liked Gambit when we are given set loadouts. Anytime I've played it at an event, it's super fun because people are all using the same crappy pulse rifle or good pulse rifle and mm-hmm. crappy sniper rifle. And that just feels it just feels more fun like that. So I think if we could at least see a, an attempt of us having like fixed loadouts of not just, you know, here's one pulse rifle, you have to use that, but maybe like a few to choose from. Mm hmm. That would be fun. I like I, that that's, idea. That's just when I enjoyed Gambit the most. I think I if you combine that idea with Polar's idea too, where you could go in and maybe you have a choice of four loadouts. That'd be and cool. And your team, yeah. you know, your team has an invader and the invader has a specific loadout. Your team has a Reaper. The Reaper has a specific loadout. And you have to four, fill all four slots. There's no duplicates. That'd actually be mm-hmm. kind of a cool game mode. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, 
um, playing it with no duplicates and and, and and that goes for exotics and weapons is actually quite good and it's quite good fun and playing um, playing it a little bit more competitively is actually it's it's nail biting. I like the, I like here. the I like the games <laughs> where hey 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 come on. It's not. I thought yeah. we were going to say the c word, Polar. No, I wasn't that <laughs> oh dear, Jesus. I mean, I could have been uh, wondering, but, hey. <laughs> cookies. Um, but you know, it's. I think it depends on how you, what your mindset is. And unfortunately, I don't think there's many people who have a similar mindset to me in terms of, you know, I just want to, I want to win, and I want to win well. So I'll do whatever I, it takes. Yeah. Uh, Daryl Izao says Microsoft is promising 4K 60 FPS on Xbox Series X. Mm-hmm. Do you think Bungie will give field of view settings? For the next gen consoles, so it would be great. It's just of how much you can fit on the screen at 60 FPS without it taking a dip in your performance. Yeah, and I don't really know the answer. To that. I don't. I know think that they Destiny will. is it, Destiny is a hard game to run with that big of a field of view. So I, I mean, I hope the consoles are are strong enough. I really. My do. guess is there won't be a field of view slider. My guess is they will dial it into what they feel is the biggest field of view that they feel like. Most players will be comfortable with, and that they yeah. can run at a consistent frame rate, and that will be locked in for all players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. I'll be happy if it's different, though. They actually give you. Some yeah, options. it'd be nice if it was a little wider than it is. I, you know, some people do get motion sick from a field of view that's too high. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It does happen. True. Yeah. Because it's kind of like a fisheye view effect that happens. Uh, let's see here. Former Guardian says, do you think the ritual sidearm and linear fusion rifle should be switched between Crucible and Strikes? Seems like it may have been missed opportunity with the Arbalist camping, and a sidearm quest could have been a reason for people to put down the shotgun for a season. Hmm. Yeah. It's an interesting thought. It's an interesting, it's an interesting thought, thought, yeah. yeah I feel is. like linear fusion rifles are way more useful in PvE, by and large. I'm yeah. never going to equip the linear fusion rifle in PvP. Like, I just don't use them ever. So I, it's you know, just yeah, same as sidearms. For me, it's yeah. A sniper rifle is better, just straight up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless it's Queensbreaker Bro with awesome aim assist. Yeah. <laughs> Pre nerf <laughs> Queensbreakers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Callum Byrne says if a movie was ever made about Destiny, would you play your guardian? I saw this on Twitter a while back and would love to know the crew's answers. So who would play your guardian? Who would play my if, guardian? Yeah, so it's not you, it's your guardian. Mm. Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I like it. Totally yeah. taking her. She's mine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hmm. Have you ever seen the movie Tucker and Dale vs. Evil? No. Mm. All right, so it's a comedy that kind of pretends to be a horror movie um, in which the two kind of redneck psychos are actually the heroes of the movie. And the teenagers kind of by happenstance end up running into these guys and killing themselves in horror movie fashions. But it's a a comedy movie. Mm -hmm. And these guys kind of go through this movie with this kind of abused look on their face. Like, Mm -hmm. I can't believe all this is happening around me. And uh, either one of those <laughs> characters, I think, would appropriately play my. Yeah, let me look up the guardian. actors' names, and I'll. I'm gonna mm-hmm. go with Amelia Clark just because I love her. Okay. Her <laughs> nice. I don't know who would play. Like, it would be my hunter. My hunter's a female, so. Yeah, it's gotta be gotta be a lady, lady hunter. I think I'm gonna steal uh, Bob's response and chant. Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, though. That's She'd also be a, good a very hunter. good one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like memes. She could have picked memes. Memes could play your hunt. Memes is kind of short, though. You know, <laughs> like I'm short. She's short. I've imagined I would have thought my hunters, hunters are short too. To be honest, hunters being short now, they're like six foot. Yeah. Hell no, nah, man. That's what a titan All, is. You no, know, yeah. titan's seven. I think foot. they're like five seven, and they got like lifts in their shoes. <laughs> they definitely have a boost. <laughs> Hunters, have you seen how high they can yeah. jump? Come on. Yeah, they jump high for sure. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be tall. Uh, Alan Tudyk was one of the people 
in that movie I was talking about, Tucker and Dale. He also mm. was the guy, the pilot in uh, in uh, Firefly. Oh, okay. Mm. Or Serenity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Colin Burns says, if a movie was... Nope, just read that one. Hero of Time 39 says, if there was a finisher in Eververse where you throw your wallet at the enemy and the amount of money that comes out for people to see is how much money you've spent at the store, <laughs> <laughs> would you still buy it or feel too guilty? I'd buy it. I think I'd, I'd buy that one. I'll be honest with you. with you. I actually want to buy everything in this season. This season so far is so awesome. So it is I just haven't beautiful. got there yet. But I yeah. think the 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 message of the question is the opposite effect that it's having. <laughs> 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 but to just like throw a wall at yeah. somebody, see the cash splash out, <laughs> cash nade, <laughs> like when it hits his face, yeah. would be hilarious. That is pretty and good. effective at getting me to spend money. <laughs> Today's the f- all right, this season is the first time I've actually bought silver in like a year yeah. or two What'd years. What'd you buy for? I bought the finishers, man. The finishers are amazing. Yeah, you the no, finishers are pretty damn cool. Oh, yeah. so I, also I bought the like, 300 like, emotes um, as well. And the Titan ones, like, in terms of holding the massive great big hammer and then the hammer thing. And, like, yeah, I, I haven't bought it yet, but I want to. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, okay, I have to spend some money here because they're not going to be for available for Bright Dust. And those finishers are badass. The golden gun one, like, you finish, you pop out a golden gun. Looks like you're oh, using the super so every time. <laughs> so good it is very I, good yes i would i would buy that and i might feel guilty until i started laughing when the wallet hit somebody's face yeah that'd be pretty them. great <laughs> <laughs> that's the only one you can i would also PvP. start asking for them to bring it to pvp <laughs> oh 100 I reckon, that is the only like, one that works. I I feel right. Okay, this is this is this is a theory that I would like, or a play test that I would like to have happen. So in mayhem, all right, have the ability to be able to use finishes. In mayhem, that'd be great. I'm in okay mayhem. with that. I like it. at least once. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or put I it into Crucible Labs for a, for a week or something. Absolutely. I think using finishes and only using finishes would be hilarious. To be honest, the problem is is there's going to be certain finishers that finish faster. Mm-hmm. Right, there's going to be meta finishers, and are those going to be expensive finishers or cheap finishers? Are they going to be the ones that we already have or ones that you got to buy? Pay to win, Oof. pay to win. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if they did I it in, in Crucible Labs for a week, I don't think they'd get too many complaints. Out. No, well, yes, they would. Complain about everything. I mean, they get complaints whatever they do, so it doesn't even matter yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, Veritas yeah. Otis fifty two says, "What would a Kojima inspired Destiny look like?" That shit crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, be a lot of well. My hunter might I, be a bit sexier, which I'm that, down that, for. There is yeah, that. Probably, there is that. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely not as much. Not just wearing as much. A little bit more realistic. Perfect. Are you guys? Have you guys all played Death Stranding? Oh yeah. What makes you think a Kojima game would be more realistic? Death Stranding, in terms of his um, actual, like the development the, the 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 visuals of it character models oh, okay visual acting. like character models would yeah. be more mm-hmm. realistic. Okay. yeah i'm not i'm not actually thinking of physically walking with packs of whatever on my back yeah no or like the crazy kind of like uh the beach stuff and all that yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah there's obviously yeah. supernatural stuff going on there yeah the, mm-hmm. that's actually one thing that i took away from death Stranding is it felt very rooted in reality with it being so out there Right, mm-hmm. so maybe mm-hmm. there would be more of that in Destiny, more, more effect of like the cost of using the light of the Traveler. You would feel the weight yeah. of the light of the Traveler you on you. I think so. That would be really cool, actually. I, yeah, I still I, wouldn't I, understand I the story. Would. No Do change there. Really, <laughs> be some really good mocap. <laughs> Uh, Bubba J seventy seven says, "What is the best non gaming Christmas present you've ever received?" Oh, that is very difficult for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Non gaming Christmas gift. Yeah. When I was ten, I got a BB gun. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Did you shoot your eye out? No, thank God. Um... I uh, got a BB gun when I was probably. 13 or 14. And the only reason I didn't get arrested was because I was too young to get arrested. 
the cop said I shot it at him when he was walking by the window, which was a fucking lie. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, Probably a trip got to New York. Placed under the youthful offender. <laughs> Yo, a trip to New York sounds like an amazing gift. Pretty much. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. How old were you when that happened? Oh, in, in my 30s. Um, 30s? Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, my mother got me, when I went to college, she bought me a Leatherman pocket knife. It was one of those mm-hmm. like multi-tools. It was one of those that were pretty new and actually really expensive. I think it was over 100 bucks. Now you can get those things pretty oh, cheap. Wow. But at oh. the time, it was really, really nice. And I really treasured it. Um, I thought that was a really cool gift. It was a really thoughtful gift. That's cool. Uh, and I really liked it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I've kind of only just got games unless it's like pajamas that were really awesome looking. Yeah, uh, so you didn't mention the pillow I got you last year. I'm a little insulted. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn. I guess that's gaming related. So, you got <laughs> yeah. that's that's true. that is, yeah, gaming related. Exactly. <laughs> I do still use the pillow. <laughs> uh, Colin Burns says if a movie was ever made about Destiny, oh, did I already read? I already read that question, right? Uh, Nate says, what bear is the best bear? Black. Are we, are we I mean, going there's only one like here, a... so by default. Polo <laughs> wins. Thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Pope. Well, there's Love the you. kind of bear that shows up and the kind that don't. <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is this an office reference also? I think it is. <laughs> Black bear. <laughs> Black bear. <laughs> Wrong! There's two schools of thoughts. <laughs> 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 is the polar bear or the grizzly bear generally the most deadly bear? I think the polar bear mm. is thought as meaner, but the grizzly bear gets more per capita kills because it's more around more people. Is that right? I would have <laughs> found more people. I, pro- <laughs> right, I would have more commonly so. found. Um, especially in North America, the the the, the grizzly bear would have been more around um it's only recently in the last five years that polar bears have actually been interacting and that's because of climate change climate change yeah they're getting mm-hmm. displaced from the ice caps their food sources mm-hmm. are shrinking they're trying to find other they are, yeah. Yeah. the Massive. grizzly is getting reintroduced to california the, it's on the flag of california but it hasn't actually been, there hasn't been grizzlies in california for like 80 or 100 years right i don't know yeah well, okay <laughs> I have no idea. I don't, I don't know the answer. I, mean, All I, know, I, can, I can tell you facts about polar bears. Call- this is great. <laughs> All I know is the legend of C. Dale Peterson. Uh huh. Tell us what is the legend of C. Dale Peterson? Killed a bear with his bare hands. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. When was this? It was like <laughs> in the eighties or something, something like that. The nineteen eighties. Yeah, and like it, the only reason it's told is because he was taking a a, a tour guide, and they like a bear attacked and. He like uh-huh. shoved his hand down the bear's throat and choked the uh, choked off the air passage. Uh-huh. Uh, he shoved his hand down the bear's throat, choked off the air passage. Oh, he didn't. I thought he shoved the tour guide's hand down the. <laughs> no, he was he was the tour guide. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, choked the air passage and like choked the bear because uh, they they were getting attacked by the bear. How big was this bear? What kind of bear was it? I think it was a grizzly. Really? No joke. I would not shove my uh, arm down a grizzly bear's throat thinking that was going to solve a problem. See, he had to see Dale Peterson the situation, man. <laughs> I guess he did. <laughs> Is this I a mean, confirmed story? I believe it's a confirmed kill. If you're going to fist something, you may yeah. as well fist him down to the elbow, right? Yeah, he got uh, got real fisty with that bear. <laughs> uh, Bite says, in the new Pokemon game, you cook curry for your Pokemon. Game Freak refuses to answer if other Pokemon themselves are ingredients in the curry. Oh. Oh. We're cooking Pokemon. Mom. On that note, yeah, are I there Pokemon? Are Pokemon, Pokemon cannibals. Is that what's going on? I have yes. no idea. <laughs> I'm not the one. They look a little so. creepy to me. You see those eyes? That's got mad cow disease written all over it. Those expressions <laughs> in their eyes, like wide open, like definitely eating you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they won't answer, I think that answers our question. Right? If they refuse it's, uh, to answer. It's too taboo I mean, to even talk evidently, about. Evidently. Cannibalism. I mean, if the answer is no, you just come out and say, no, that's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. 
If the answer mm-hmm. is yes, you might want to be a little more sensitive around talking around the subject. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. All right, moving on. Hugo says, <laughs> <laughs> apart from the words free bar, what other two words make you a Christmas work party bearable? Free food? More, yeah. <laughs> more, or more booze was the other one. Free money? I think free <laughs> bar, definitely. Free money. Yeah. Yep. Free uh, money? Attendance optional? Mm-hmm. Attendance <laughs> gives me a promotion. <laughs> no uh, Christmas sweaters allowed. Yep. Mm-hmm. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> photo booth installed. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, photo yes, booth installed. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Venom Wannabe says, what's the best Christmas snack and why is it eggnog and fruitcake? Is it though? I, mean, I could not disagree that's, with uh, that's that in his more. opinion. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one, to be honest. No, I, mean, I do not like either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you bring to the party to have people not show up. Right? That, yeah, that, it's like yeah, the that's... joke thing, right? Like, look, they actually that's still say sell fruitcake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I brought it. It's yeah. a as a joke. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know when it comes to like Christmas snacks. Chocolate chip cookies. Uh, the cookies that you're supposed to give to Santa, but you eat them. Right? Oh, the sugar cookies. Oh, yeah. sugar cookies, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sugar, sugar cookies is one. And yeah. obviously, you know, there's a glass of milk for him. My too. family has a tradition of making uh, deviled eggs. Do you guys know what deviled eggs are? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like cut mm-hmm. in half eggs and then you just Stir the yolk with, I think, mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little mustard. Yeah, I and tend then to top it with a... paprika or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're known in our family to make people fart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's nice. the big joke around Christmas is we all get together, have some deviled just, eggs, just and then just let the games begin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> do, do, does going to your family parties come with gas masks? No, no, you're just going to have to stick it out. <laughs> uh, my wife, surprisingly, doesn't serve deviled eggs. <laughs> Weird. Small woman. Yeah. Small woman. Yeah. Uh, that's it for Twitter questions. Nicely oh, wow. done. Well done, guys. Yeah. That was some well solid done. questioning going on right there. It was indeed. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for all the questions, guys. Well, is that it for the show? Is that the wrap? I think so. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Well, Polar, thanks for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much yeah. for the invite. Where can people find you on the internet? Um, on the internet, you can find me at Twitch. Polar Bear. Pause one second. You on... just cut out. I just want to make sure that comes through for the live audience. One more time. Twitch.tv forward slash Polar Bear. There we go. There we go. You can also find me uh, on Twitter, which is polar bear twitch on twitter find me there um i've got discord so it's discord.gg polar bear forward slash polar bear if you want that too and i I do have a youtube and i think that actually is youtube dot whatever the youtube thing is forward slash polar bear on twitch nice and you said you had a video about your thoughts on gambit and all that i do i i also have like i got a movie of the week for, nice. for a Gambit Prime parody that I did, um, which nice. was to Baby Shark. Um, so that was kind of fun. That's, uh, that's on there. There's a whole bunch of other things as well. So lore specific to Gambit on there. I've done, and it's just like highlights in terms of not me, stupid Titan gunfight play. So nice. Yeah, it's really cool. That's about it, really. I don't think there's anything else. Awesome. Uh, Briar? Uh, I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me laying in bed as still as possible. Uh, waiting for the meds to wear off. Potentially very high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Potentially not remembering anything. Drugged out. Almost definitely. <laughs> 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 there have been some meds involved in my uh, <laughs> in my uh, rest period for my back pain. Mm. Yes. yes. Uh, I am Miss 5000 Watts. You can find me Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Just look for Miss 5000 Watts. And I am Tefty Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter and catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. I want to say thank you guys for hanging out tonight, whether you're in the live situation here on Twitch or if you're watching on uh, on YouTube or listening through the various podcast indications, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those things. Really appreciate the support, guys. Uh, also, shout out to our patrons. 
who help support the show. And uh, yeah, thanks for all the support across the board. Thank you. All the so Twitch much. subs as well. And uh, we will see you next week for another show. Thank you. Yes. See ya. Bye, everyone. Yep. Bye. Bye, everybody.